friends, it's Christy. Welcome to Bitly Ditly Has Plans. In today's video, I'm sharing with you how I created these budget category dashboards to help me in following the budget by paycheck method from the Budget Mom. So let's get started. Okay, so with the budget by paycheck method, you take your budget and um, all of your expenses and you kind of break them down into different categories. And so I know it looks like I kind of have a lot and it took me a little while to kind of figure out what made sense for our family, for our life. Um, this is my first one that I made here, um, my categories, and then um, sort of just kind of when annual expenses hit and then when monthly expenses hit, just so that I make sure that I'm saving in advance of when these kind of larger um, bills are going to be due. Um, but what I basically, and this is my newer one here, what I basically have is I have my auto, um, and this includes anything regarding like auto loans, gas, maintenance, repairs, clothes, that's everything um, from accessories, shoes, um, school uniforms for the girls. Um, and then I have uh, food. And this is anything I purchase at a grocery store. So when I do my grocery store runs, I usually shop at the commissary. Um, and it's anything I buy there. So including like Otis's dog food, I buy there. Um, and then I also put dining out in this category. I know a lot of people when they're starting their budget journey, they um, make dining out a separate category. I think that's a great idea if that's an area that you really want to focus on improving. Um, but for us, you know, we kind of eat at home a lot. Um, dining out is sort of an occasional thing. Um, and so I, I felt like I could keep that just kind of lumped into my food. And it's one of those things where okay, if we go out, that means I have less money to spend at the grocery store. And if that's if, the, if that's fine for us, then that's fine. Um, and then I also do a food program um, for health and weight loss. And so I, I put that in here as well. Fun is anything regarding crafts, hobbies, going to the movies, any of our school events like the crab feed. Um, they have a big annual auction, that kind of thing. Um, going to a concert or, you know, uh, giving the girls money to go to, you know, a basketball game or a football game. Um, and then gifts, gifts is everything. Um, birthday, special occasions like a Mother's Day or a Father's Day, um, all of the holidays, um, and then like maybe souvenirs if we go on vacation, that kind of thing. Um, I do include Christmas in here, but I will say that I have like a separate sinking fund for Christmas. And I often when I'm doing my Christmas shopping, I will kind of break that down just in my tracking because I like to know how much am I spending on Christmas every year. That's such a big gift giving season um, that I like to know how to be prepared for that, how much I should be saving um, throughout the rest of the year as I gear up for it. And so I do actually kind of total out um, my Christmas spending kind of separately just so that I have a good gauge for that. Household, Anything like replacing appliances, buying a new blender, maintenance, repairs, utilities, electronics, that kind of stuff. Like when I bought my um, MacBook Pro, I put that under um, household expenses. Miscellaneous, things that come up. I put the kids allowance under here because um, I kind of just didn't know where else to put it. It's the unplanned stuff. Um, things pop up like, you know, that I use as miscellaneous. Personal and healthcare, this is beauty. Do I go to the nail salon and get my nails done for a pedicure or anything like that? Haircuts, um, dry cleaning I put under here because that was kind of an odd one. Like I um, have to wear a lot of suits and dresses and that kind of thing when we're working in the office. Um, and so I wanted a category for that. And then medical co-pays, um, prescriptions, anything like that um, is under this category. Pet, that's my Otis. So anytime he goes to the vet, um, anytime I go to the pet store to buy food, treats, toys, that kind of stuff for him. Um, the stuff at the grocery store, I know it seems kind of odd, just comes out of here. Um, but all of the extra stuff that I get like from the pet store comes out of that one. And then school, um, that's tuition, textbooks, supplies. Um, and then uh, the girls' um, cafeteria has a... Um, school bucks lunch program where you put money into a school bucks account for them and then they can buy their lunch at school. So I put that under school expenses. 
And then we have sports for my girls. Um, I've got a soccer player and a basketball player. So any of their fees, like registration fees, um, tournament fees, any gear. My husband tends to pay their club fees and like tournament fees. I tend to do the things like buy the cleats, buy the new kit that they have to do every two years. Um, and then travel expenses. Uh, we're going out of town for a basketball tournament, stuff like that. Um, and then subscriptions and dues. So we've got Costco, Amazon Prime, Netflix, any of those kind of iCloud apps, anything like that. So those are my budget categories. And what I did was I assigned a color to each one so that when I'm going through and tracking my expenses and my expense tracker, I highlight them accordingly and then I can easily add them all up and know how much I'm spending in each category for each month. So that's the budget categories. And then on the back side, Here's like I said, where I have all of my annual expenses and monthly things. So like in March, I know our registrations due, car registrations due. In May, I just paid this one. Home again is Otis's microchip. Um, so there's a, a small fee for that service. Um, in July is when I usually buy their textbooks. Um, it's when tuition starts and tuition runs from July through May. And then in August is when my Costco membership is due, et cetera, and so on. And then in the monthly, this is just so I know like what bills I have. So on the 1st and the 15th, these are the bills I pay. On the 13th is when our Netflix is due, etc. And then bi-monthly, like every so often, um, I buy uh, these Omega-3 supplements are for Otis and the Apoquil is also for Otis. Um, so this is kind of, it just kind of helps me out. So like when I'm doing my monthly setup, if you watched um, my May, so this is kind of how I do it where... Um, this is color coded so that the green was paid with the first paycheck of the month and then the pink was highlighted and paid with the second paycheck of the month. But I used my dashboard to help me remember, okay, what do I pay on the first? What do I pay on the fifth or the 13th, etc. So that's kind of how that helps me. And you'll see me do that um, if you've seen any of my um, budget setup videos. Okay, so what I wanted to do was just kind of walk you through how I made this. It's really simple, friends. I'll just kind of give you a short run. It's basically a Word document that I created, um, trimmed it down, and then I went to uh, Staples, I think, um, and had it laminated. I know I've used both Staples and Office Depot to laminate, and this is a pretty nice, I feel like this might be three millimeter or five millimeter. I can't remember exactly which ones they have available. Um, but you just have them laminate it for you. And then I brought it home and I trimmed it down um, and added these coil clips from Erin Condren onto it. So um, let me switch over to showing you on the computer how I created the Word documents for these. Okay, so what I start with is just opening a new um, blank Word document. And I'm gonna start with inserting a text box. So I just pick like, you know, a basic text box um, kind of make it a little bit bigger just to start with. And then I'm just gonna delete their language. And I started with my budget categories, right? And my first one was auto. Um, and then under there, I just added the bullet points to remind me, okay, what falls under the auto category? So my loan, um, gas, uh, repairs, um, maybe insurance, you know, whatever you want to have under here. So basically you kind of just go through and um, create all of your categories. My next category was um, clothes. And you can format this in any way you want. You can use whatever font you want. Um, maybe you want a font that is a little more, um, you know, fun looking. Uh, maybe you want to change the color of your font to something a little more fun, like here's a dark green or whatever. So basically you build um, your category list. And I kind of ended up building mine. I moved it over just because I was using the edge of the page um, and kind of, uh, let me go to one page, looking at a full page, right? I wanted to kind of fill the full page. Now, if you're using an eight and a half by 11, um, then you're probably fine, like making it as big as you want. I um, end up reducing mine down um, because I have a seven by nine budget planner. And so basically you build this out. And then what I did was I then insert, um, 
the background. And so I got my background, like you can get any kind of artwork. Um, I don't sell these dashboards. I don't make them for money. I don't really advertise them or anything like that. My videos are not monetized. Um, so I did use some artwork people probably noticed from Plum Paper. Um, I know EC has like free phone backgrounds that they put on their website. You can pull artwork from there. But if you were to monetize this in some way, make sure you're using licensed artwork and you know that you're doing all of that legitimately. Um, and so I am going to pull some free artwork that I had got from, um, let me see, where is my fonts and graphics? And then I have Jungle. This is Creative Market is a really cool website where you can get um, art elements like this. So you can see that background um, or you can get fonts. Um, you can get all kinds of templates and some of them are free. I think they used to do like free Mondays, like every Monday in their newsletter, they'd have like free items. I've gotten a lot of free fonts from there, or you can pay for things. Um, how I found out about them was a friend of mine, Sadie. I was redoing my resume at the time because I had just received my CMP certification and I wanted to add it to my resume. And so she um, told me about that. And so um, I kind of stayed just kind of subscribe to their newsletter because I like the free stuff that you can get. So here's the art that I've pulled in. And I'm just going to move it to the back um, so that I can put it behind my text box. And so I, like I said, I use that edge of the paper. And so let's say if this is the size of my text box, then I'm going to bring my art and kind of make it a little bit bigger than um, my art so that I have like whatever border I want, right? However wide, if you want a really wide border um, or if you want like a narrow board, bo border, excuse me, can't talk today. Um, and so that's just kind of how I did. I just kind of visualize it. I did a, a page for categories and then I did um, the next page, which was um, for um, my annual expenses and monthly expenses. So I'm gonna show you um, another version that I have. So this is kind of the finished version. So I took this one and I made the font blue. I really like this kind of sans serif type of font. And um, that's kind of my favorite. And then you'll see the second page here. I have the annual expenses, um, March, May, July, and then my monthly, and then my bi-monthly. Um, and so I kind of have this. And again, friends, I just kind of eyeball it. I have um, kind of a border all the way around it. Um, my text box has a little bit of shadow to it. Um, like you can totally format these kinds of things um, in um, your um, font. You know, you can change the font, whatever you want to do there. So basically when I have this, then I go ahead and for me, because I shrink it down a little bit, like if I had a full eight and a half by 11, um, planner, I would probably just print this as is. But what I do for me is I actually save it as a PDF because when it's a PDF document, um, I can then, when I go to print a PDF, I can shrink it down. And that's how I make it a little bit smaller um, in size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna save it because I already have it saved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and print this, um, shrunken down so I can show you. Um, okay, so here it is in the PDF. And what I do is when it's ready to print, I will go to print and here's where I will shrink it down in custom scale. I will shrink it to either 80%. So as you can see, it got smaller here um, because I have a seven by nine. And um, sometimes I even shrink it a little smaller. It just kind of depends on how small you want it to be. I have it act as like, a kind of like a bookmark for me. Um, so you can see the white border of the paper um, where I've just shrunk it. If you have a full size um, budget planner, you might be able to just print it at full size um, and it fit fine. Um, so that's how um, I actually shrink it down is by printing it as a PDF. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and go ahead and print that and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here is the printed pages of um, the, 
the budget dashboard. And I like to print on 32 pound weight paper. Um, I just usually buy a ream of it at the start of the year and I print my um, budget workbook pages on this paper. It's a little bit thicker than normal copy paper and I just feel like it stands up a little better. Um, and so that's what I printed this on. And then what I do is I just take my paper trimmer and I trim down, I'm trying to do this so you can see it. I'm not sure if I'm totally in frame. I will just go ahead and trim this down. I'm trying to trim along the, the background of this print is white, so it's kind of hard to make sure I'm not trimming into the print. I'm not very good at the trimming straight. <laughs> I've always had a problem with that. Okay, and then so that's the sheet, and then trim the other one. Okay, and then what I do is I'm gonna line these up and I'm just gonna even them out a little bit. Make sure they're both the same size. I think I need to get a new blade. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then what I use, because I don't like the sharp edges, I, if you notice these um, corners are rounded, I have my handy dandy, had this for years. Those of you that are scrapbookers are gonna recognize this right away. This is a Creative Memories corner rounder. And so all I do is I go in and I round those corners. And you have to remember to round the corners of your paper before you get it laminated. Um, cause trust me, I've made the mistake of laminating it when it was square and then going, Oh, I wanted them rounded. <laughs> okay. So rounded that off and then I'm going to just glue stick these together. You can use glue stick. You can use, um, you know, your scrapbook, double-sided tape, whatever. Um, this is just enough to hold it together so that it'll stay nice when it's running through the laminating machine. Um, like I said, I don't have a laminator. I just go ahead and I take them to Staples or Office Depot. It's not that expensive. I'm gonna say it's like $2 or something like that to get it done. Okay, so that's the base of it. It's all glued down. And then I have the Zebra Mild Liners. I have this pack of 15, which is the pack that I used in um, choosing my colors to highlight with. This is newer. I got this 10 pack as part of a um, pack uh, from Costco. It had actually the 15 count and the 10 count, as well as another like little four or five count with the brush tip. Um, so then you just go through and you decide what, um, what your highlighting colors will be for your different um, categories. And so like I did auto and gray, my clothes is um, this color here. Uh, my food is the green, etc. And so you just want to make sure you highlight them um, again before you go and take it laminated. So I'm sorry I don't have like the full sheet laminated example to show you, but basically um, it's a full eight and a half by 11 sheet that they um, laminated in. And then what I do is I trim it down on my paper trimmer. And again, I use my little corner rounder and just clip that. This uh, Creative Memories one is um, strong enough, sharp enough to clip through, like I said, kind of the lighter weight um, lamination. I can't remember again if this is three mil or five mil. And then I just round the corners because I don't want them to be pokey. And then um, the last thing that I did was I add these coil clips. And so I wanted to show you, Erin um, Condren has two sizes. This is, I think it's a four inch size and yeah, four inches. And it includes six of the, um, coil clips. So that sort of looks like this. You take off this piece here and you would um, adhere it to um, your, um, sorry, I had that backwards. You take off the uh, 3M strip and you'd adhere it here. And then this is just, take this off. This is where it clips on to your coil. 
And then it also comes in a um, two inch size and you get 12 in a pack here. So these are the small ones. These are the ones that I have. I just did two of them um, on my um, dashboard. So that's really it. And these are pretty inexpensive. I can't remember how much they cost on her site. Um, but again, it comes in a four inch size or the two inch size. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much all it is. It was just a Word document. Um, I did a text box and then I put the um, artwork, I formatted it and moved it to the back um, so that I could overlay them and then cut it out, took it to my local Staples and or Office Depot and then had it laminated and then came home and trimmed it. Um, again, make sure you use, you leave a little bit of laminating border um, so that it doesn't end up splitting on you. Um, lamination tends to like split open if you cut too close to the edge of your paper. And again, I just trim this with my paper trimmer that I have here at home. Um, so that's it. I hope you found this helpful. Um, and if you like this video, please, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe so you can catch future content on my channel. Thanks friends for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.